Hello friends and welcome of you this video of our course enabling Spring Security in a Spring Boot web application. In this video and the next videos we will uh, focus on the first way that we have said before which is this one extending the web security configurer adapter and we will implement these two interfaces all together we will implement on the Spring Boot web application that we have created in our previous course building a web application using Spring Boot and Time Leaf. So these are the packages and the classes that we have created in the previous course so I will not go through them but the first thing we need to do when we want to enable the Spring Security in a Spring Boot web application is that we create a package by the name of security and we start creating the first class which you can name it whichever name you wish in my case I'm naming it as a security configuration but before we dive in, let me show you one uh, reference that uh, will tell you everything about the Spring Security, which is this one, the Spring Security reference. And you can have all the details about the Spring Security within this reference. Especially the uh, what types of uh, security the Spring Security can provide to you. Now the Spring Security can provide you against multiple threats such as the CSRF, the cross-site reference forgery, or the uh, session fixation, and multiple other uh, threats that your web application can face. The Spring Security can protect you against all these threats. So in the first class we will extend the web security configurer adapter as we have said and we will implement two annotations the add configuration and add enable web security now the third annotation we you may forget about for the time being because it's related to the uh, second way the spring security annotations so we will forget about for the time being now this web security configurer adapter has one method which can be implemented in three ways the configure method we can implement with the authentication build manager builder <coughs> class or with the HTTP security class or with the web security class now each one class can be have a different task to uh, of spring security can be implemented on your web application <coughs> in this video we will talk about the second and the third classes which is the HTTP security and the uh, web security now remember in the, our previous course we have created this uh, simple web application which contains few pages some social networks some login form now whenever any user wish to access to your web application we need to tell the web application which user has the right to access which resource or which page so the web application should know that because some pages you don't want all the users to access to some pages so we need to make a restriction for some of users to access to these restricted pages this all can be done with the use of the HTTP security class it can give authorities to the users so only this user with this authority can access to this resource this is the whole point of the HTTP security the first authority is the permit all permit all means uh, of course first thing we need to create an object of the HTTP security and we call the authorize request method and then we call the ant matchers in the ant matchers we need to assign which resources to be to have such uh, or this permission or this permission or this permission so the first permission is the permit all which means any resource within these two brackets can be accessed by any user simple any user can access any resource any web page within these two brackets which is the meaning of the permit all now the second permission it has any role 
You remember when we created the database in the previous video, we created two tables, one for the roles and one for the authority. And we made few roles, we gave them arbitrary name, we gave, we gave them names, and we created some authorities, and we gave them arbitrary names, as we have said before. Now, these roles and these authorities must be assigned to the users so they can access to a certain resource of your role application. And this can be seen in here. So for instance, this resource, this page, the accounts page, this page, I don't want any user to access it because it contains the names and the details of the registered users. So I want to restrict this page from being accessed only from the admin user or the super user. Only these two users will have the right to access to this resource. In this case, I will assign the role authority to these two users to access to this resource. Remember, the roles and the authorities, what we have said before, the authority is a certain privilege, is a certain permission we assign to a user to do something in the web application. This is the meaning of the authority. It's just a certain permission we give to a user. Now, the roles, on the other hand, is a combination of uh, authorities. It's like a vault. It's like a, a, a box of uh, authorities that is assigned to one user. So the role could have multiple uh, authorities such as this one, another one, another one, and we assign all these authorities in one big granular uh, authority which is named role, and we can assign this role to one user. While the authority is a, a small granular uh, permission that can be given to one user to do only one thing one thing with the web application. So this is the difference between the roles and the authorities. So in this case, this resource, we restrict the users from accessing to this resource only for the admin who has a role and the super user role. The user who has an admin role and the super role can access to this resource. Now the third permission, the third authority, is has any has, has authority or has any authority. In this case, suppose you have a new user. This new user registered a new account, and then the user wants to log in to his account, to his account page. In this case, we call it user logged in. This is the page of the user when he logs in using his credentials, the login and the password. Now, we don't want any user to access to my account page. So how can I do that? I give that user who registered with my web application an authority by the name this name. This is just an arbitrary name to access to his account page. So any user who is not registered will not be able to access to this resource because this resource belongs to a registered user which have this authority. I hope this clarify the meaning of the has authority. Any other user who doesn't have a role, who doesn't have this permit all, who doesn't have the authority, in this case he need to be authenticated. We need to give him a special uh, privilege like I log in and username so he can access to the web application. Now one thing to notice and it's important is the precedence of these permissions. The precedence. Which one has a higher precedence? Now you remember we said that this resource can be accessed only by these two users which have the role of admin or super. Now what if I move this page, this resource, if I move it in here? If I do this, in this case, any user can access to this resource, 
regardless of this line of code. Once I place any resource in the permit hole, any user can access to it, regardless of what authority I have given to the user to access to this resource. So you need to give attention to the precedence of the authorities. The next thing, you remember in the application we have developed before, we place the login form <coughs> as the index page, as the root page, which is the root page, or also called, could be the index page. So this is the root page and this is the index page. We placed the login form in this page. Now what if the, you wish to put the login page, the login form, in a separate page? How can I apply the Spring Security on that page for the login form? It can be done with this way. Dot login, form login, then the login page, name, whatever name you have given to your login page, and then permit all. And then, if the login failed, if the user wished to login, and the login failed for whichever reason, you need to assign a page to redirect to. If the login failed, then you need to assign another page so that the failed login can redirect to that page. In our case, we call it, let's say, login error. This is the whole uh, line of codes that you need to do if you placed the login form not in the root page or in the index page, and you placed it in a separate page. Now let's talk about one of the most important uh, attacks that Spring Security protects us against. It's the CSRF attack, the cross-site reference forgery. Pro uh, if you wish to know, as I said, if you wish to know more about these attacks, you can... There are um, many uh, references and many articles about the cross-site reference attack, which can tell you what is this attack and how you can avoid it. And one of them is this... Uh, article, as I have told you, you can pr protect yourself against this attack, but by default, by default, Spring Security, by default, protect you against this attack. So it's enabled by default when you use the Spring Security. This is number one. Number two, you need to do one thing to make this protection enabled in your web application. And this thing is, you need to add a piece of code in every page that contains a form. In every page that contains a form, you need to place a certain code. For instance, <coughs> the login form <coughs> that we are using, this is the login form, the HTML login form. And... Uh, at the end of the HTML of the login form fragment, now this is the login form, which contains just an email input and password input. At the end of it, you need and you must add this lines of code, which is a hidden type input. Now what this will do, what this code will do, this will send A secret token to the server from which the server will authenticate that this login details the login details that have been sent from the web application to the server is authenticated and coming from that web application and it's not a forgery coming from another uh, fake web application this is the whole point of this small piece of code so, you, by default, the CSR uh, protection is enabled in Spring Security, but you must do this code in every form in your web application, in every form. At the end of the form, at the end of the HTML form, you just add this few lines of code so that the Spring Security protection against the CSR attack can be enabled and will protect you and protect your whole application from this attack. 
Now, also by default, uh, Spring Security, if there is anything went wrong when you want to log in or when you want to register a new user or for any login, uh, for any form, when something goes wrong, Spring Security will redirect you to a, a default page by the name of login. Now, if you wish, wish to uh, redirect your failed login form or failed register form connections, then you need to disable the CSRF and use this code to assign a new redirection to a certain page. So it will not redirect you to the default page by of the secu Spring Security. It will you will be redirected to another page of your choice. In this case, this is the code that you need to add. But you need to disable the CSR, which is highly unrecommended. I mean, highly, really highly unrecommended that you disable the CSR attack because you will, your web application will be vulnerable to this attack. So don't do this. The last thing with this HTTP security is suppose that one user has logged into his account and at the end of which he wants to log out. Then you need to tell the your web application, you need to tell the Spring Security to which page you will be redirected once the user log out. In this case, we can use this few lines of code, the logout, logout request matcher. In this case, you will assign to which page uh, you will be logged out. Generally, when the logout is successful, we will redirect to the root or to the index page. In general, this is but of course, it's totally up to you to decide if the user log out where to be redirected. And that's it. That's all about the HTTP security class. The main things we have talked about. Now the other uh, class, which is the web security. Now there are few resources in your web application. You don't wish to apply on them the spring security, such as the some files like the CSS files, like the images, videos, or static resources you don't want to apply the web security on them so what you need to put them in this method the configure method which uses the web security and then create an object of it and dot ignore use the ignore method and then and matches and then you place all the resources that you wish you don't wish spring security to be applied on Okay, so that's uh, all about the f this video and which we talked about the second and the third uh, method and in the next video we will start the real work, the real work of the Spring Security by enabling the user detail service and user details and all it will be done with this first method, the configure that uses the authentication manager builder and we will see how we can implement the real Spring Security on the web application and on the database. Thank you very much.